This happens when you have very easy money. That means negative interest, crazy printing of money and money chasing uh, returns. Then companies like Wirecard get access um, through nice marketing stories and grab this money and then have a huge scam going on. I expect in the next years that we, we have another financial crisis. We will have a lot of these companies, these zombie companies, which are actually failing. And we will see that there was a, a tremendous amount of fraud going on and tremendous amount of scams going on. Servus and greetings from Vienna. My name is Anita Posch. Thank you for listening to Bitcoin und Co., my podcast that's introducing the philosophy, ideas and people behind Bitcoin. Hello, boys and girls. This is episode 64 of the Bitcoin and Co. podcast. My guest today is a friend from the German-speaking Bitcoin space. It's Moritz Wietersheim. You will hear more about him later in the interview. If you have a question about the podcast or Bitcoin in general, feel free to visit the episode page at anita.link forward slash 64, where you will find an audio recorder to record your question, as well as the full transcript of our talk. To stay in the loop and not miss an episode, please hit the subscribe button in your podcast player now. And you also can subscribe to my newsletter at anita.link forward slash subscribe. Not your keys, not your coins is one of the basic rules in Bitcoin. Therefore, I definitely recommend using a hardware wallet, which is what most professional crypto experts use. For those who have difficulties with the technical requirements and constant maintenance of hardware wallets, there is the card wallet. The card wallet is a very simple and secure solution for long-term storage of Bitcoin and Ethereum. No software updates needed, it's 100% offline and it leaves no traces on the blockchain. You can give it away as a gift or inheritance. You can send Bitcoin to it and all you have to do is to store it in a safe place. The manufacturers are the Austrian State Printing House and Coinfinity, Austria's first Bitcoin broker founded in 2014. Order your card wallet at cardwallet.com slash Anita and get 20% off. Local Bitcoins is one of the most trusted and the largest peer-to-peer -peer trading platforms in the world. On Local Bitcoins, you can buy and sell your Bitcoins in an easy, fast and secure way, always protected by escrow. Unlike stock-like exchanges, Local Bitcoins allows you to trade with people like you and you can choose any currency you prefer and find a safe payment method to complete your trade. Local Bitcoins also offers a web wallet, so you can trade and deposit and send out your Bitcoin all in one account. Go to www.localbitcoins.com to buy and sell Bitcoin. If you're interested in more Bitcoin-related podcasts, then check out the Let's Talk Bitcoin network at letstalkbitcoin.com, where you can find a number of other highly relevant Bitcoin podcasts today. Hello, everybody. My guest today is Moritz Wittersheim. Moritz is the CEO and co-founder of Crypto Advance, a company that focuses on security improvements and the secure management of private keys in the Bitcoin space. Preparing for the interview, I found out that Moritz and I, we both started to work full time in the Bitcoin space in 2017. Moritz is working and living in Germany and Austria. Hello, Moritz. Thanks for doing this interview. Hi, Anita. Pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for inviting. You're welcome. Moritz, at the beginning, please tell us a little bit about yourself. What did you do for a living before you found out about Bitcoin? I have a business background and business development background. So I was working for 10 years in the wind energy business always uh, developing, financing, constructing uh, um, and selling wind projects to investors and financing it with banks. So I have a pretty good knowledge about renewable energy and finance and, and, and come from that angle and always had a strong interest in uh, currency, monetary systems and investment bubbles and, and crashes and had a 
good interest in, in Austrian economics. And where did this come from before? I mean, the interest in Austrian economics. I didn't know it before Bitcoin, actually. Well, I, I read a book by Ferdinand Lips, which is called Gold Wars, back around 2005 and experienced the 2000 internet bubble in, in Germany, which was quite an interesting experience because a lot of my cousins were doing an internet business now and everybody was, was a little, little, little bit like seven, 2017 and uh, it was quite extreme. And, and then I was in Argentina after my uh, military service and school. And this was in 2001, so just a few months before the whole thing um, collapsed, the banks collapsed there, and it was already very extreme. So I always followed the situation there in Argentina and uh, was wondering what went wrong and how this could be fixed and how maybe the system could become more more robust and, and why these things uh, happen and why, why they shouldn't happen. Okay, you told me you've also been to Brazil. Was this before or after Argentina? Yes, well, when I, when I was studying, I did an internship in Brazil and had good friends there, uh, which um, always told me about the hyperinflation and you still can sort of feel the, the effects of the hyperinflation, how the country never really recovered from the, the hyperinflation of the late 80s and early 90s. And what was so interesting is that when you ask the people there how life was, they explain you that on the payday, on Friday, they got paid and they got basically a, a huge bag of paper money and the wife came and picked it up at the job and ran it immediately to the supermarket to buy all groceries because the money would be worthless in like 24 hours later. And um, now when I talk to my Brazilian friends about this, who experienced hyperinflation, they have really surprisingly trouble to understand bitcoin you know and this is something which is really really puzzling me if you are a person who lived in a situation like in argentina or brazil and you experienced how your money stopped working and um, then it, and it still is so difficult for these people to understand bitcoin you see what kind of adoption problems we, we would still have to overcome before Bitcoin becomes really uh, a mainstream tool. Do you think that they don't understand the concept or the handling, the usability or everything actually? <laughs> so I think that our uh, school system does a very bad job about telling us about monetary and also legal concepts. So you come out of school and you know a little bit about art probably and, and uh, whatever, and um, but you don't know about money and People don't talk in, about money. You know, in Germany we have to say uh, saying like uh, über Geld spricht man nicht, so you don't talk about money, and uh, it's a it's a really bad bad situation. So we have a very low education um, level even here in Austria and Germany. And if you try to understand Bitcoin, you have first to understand, or you you begin to understand. You don't know money, and you don't understand money what it is actually is. And if you look what money actually is, it's basically the technology for us humans to communicate value and allocate resources. So it's probably the most important technology for humans to collaborate in large societies. And uh, unfortunately, it's a, it's a very badly understand technology. And you don't learn about it in the newspapers. You don't learn, it, learn about it in, in the mainstream media. Most content is actually more confusing. So you really have to understand money first in a reasonably good way to understand Bitcoin. And from there you can go. Yeah, that's true. Same story for me. I hadn't known how money works or how it's created, how it comes into the economy and how it works before Bitcoin too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you get to know about Bitcoin then? Mm. I had a friend visiting me in January 2017 and she told me blockchain is the amazing thing and it's going to change the world. <laughs> and so I looked it up like uh, an hour later on, on the internet and there was a, a blockchain article and I didn't really understand what problem it was solving. And I was asking then, okay, what is really working on blockchain or in blockchain? And then I came across Bitcoin with the next click 
And then I f totally fell into a rabbit hole and two weeks of nonstop research of watching Andreas Antonopoulos videos and uh, researching what everybody else from Trace Mayer and Turda Mesta and all these people were saying about it. I was struggling to understand the whole mining concept and how this computing power and the hashing works all together and the whole game theory. And it took me probably, I don't know, a rather long time to understand this. And then I, yes, I was working briefly for a cloud mining company in, in Munich, but it was um, not what I really wanted to do. And I didn't see that I could contribute anything of great value there and was figuring out then, hey, the whole uh, hardware wallet space, there needs to be a lot of improvement because in mid-2017, and there were some hacks and I was thinking, okay, maybe we, we need some better product here or some better infrastructure here to, to help um, individuals and companies to manage their private keys and protect their Bitcoins and, and private keys. Your story sounds a lot like mine. It also took me very long to understand the depth of Bitcoin, you know, the mining and how it is, everything is connected. It's basically like a living organism. Mm -hmm. And it also seems that step by step, you saw what the problems are. And then you found the point where you said, okay, I want to work in this space and I know what to do. That's great. Yes. Yeah, so what's so, sort of so amazing about the space that if if we if bitcoin is really successful and i th think it has a very very good chance of doing this we really have a separation of money and and state and this is a i think it's a rather good idea if you look into the current macro situation where you have unelected central bankers um, doing incredible quantitative easing and printing of money so and i think a lot of like bad things come from this. It changes the time preference, the time horizon, and the whole human behavior. So if you change the basic transactional layer for communicating value in a society and you manipulate it with negative interest rates and, and super easy printed money, then you distort uh, human activity and action completely, I believe. So do you see... Bitcoin more as a store of value or, I mean, what you say seems you also think that it's going to be a medium of exchange in the future? Well, I think Bitcoin is going through different uh, phases and uh, this was already before Plan B uh, wrote about his different uh, clusters. So what I want to say is at the beginning, it was a very nerdy niche project and a lot of Uh, people who, uh, some people who understood what is going on or thought, hey, this is a fun collectible to have, they collected Bitcoin like, uh, like a funny internet token. And um, from that collectible, it's moving now into uh, a store of value, into a savings technology phase. So we are currently at the market valuation. I don't know. I don't check the price too much at the moment, but maybe 200 billion US dollars. And as a, as a savings technology, which cannot be censored, which cannot be really confiscated, which is digital scarcity. And this is a very interesting, powerful concept when you think about it. It's a very attractive store of value technology. And from that, with Lightning and Liquid and other second layer solutions, we, we, we see that we can move into a... Uh, mediums of exchange uh, function for Bitcoin so that you actually can also buy a coffee with it or make uh, small transactions. And there's a, this is an, an incredibly dynamic um, space. And from that, if Bitcoin is very large and boring, then you can also use it as a unit of account that you can really base contracts on it and you have the stability then. But at the moment, Bitcoin is still very small and, and, and very volatile and it need to, needs to absorb more value, store more value and have more trading and more liquidity and, and more market participants to have more stability as a store of value. This will take its time. I oh, mean, yeah. Yeah, because I see many people are very impatient and say Bitcoin has failed already. And so <laughs> they do their own blockchains and their own projects. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, you coming from the wind energy sector, I wanted to ask you, do you see any use cases for blockchain there? I mean, I've heard about things like solar energy being distributed or paid via blockchain mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yes, so yes, so paid via blockchain is it's like it's a it's a, it's a question of what do you want to do, what the problem is you're actually solving. And if you really dig into it, you usually see okay you don't need a decentralized blockchain or anything like this so i think ledger is is providing the french uh, wind energy industry with some measuring tools for electricity production or something but I, coming from the space i and i i plan electricity stop stations and stuff so there is not really a problem i would see which you could not solve with a database and digital signatures and some timestamping or something. So then there's no need actually for blockchain or something. And it's, and it's, it's, there's no real big problem waiting for blockchain. So I'm not into the whole blockchain space too much to say. It's um, as Bitcoin as we're trying to be very efficient with the, with the block space on the blockchain and to, to use the blockchain as little as possible. And everybody else is trying to put crypto kitties on blockchains and stuff. So, and it's, I think that was the moment for me really when I finally totally realized, okay, after looking into other projects, okay, when the crypto kitties in December 2017 totally uh, clogged and, and blocked the, the Ethereum blockchain, it was, it was uh, really over for me. So I, I don't think this, this is very interesting. So I'm not into altcoin. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a differentiation to do here, not say blockchain to these projects. They are distributed ledger projects or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. most of the times. And yeah, also I wanted to ask you about altcoins. Good that we come to this mm -hmm. uh, point. What do you think about altcoins? Are there some mm -hmm. that have a viable use case in your eyes? Yes. Well, so I, I like to separate the space into two spaces. So you have the sound money technology space with Bitcoin and some other competitors. And then you have the blockchain database, a decentralized ledger space. So I think they're mixed up, but they're actually trying to do something else. So with Bitcoin, we really are looking for For, for digital scarcity, for sound money technology in the, in the Austrian economic sense. And when you look in this space and you analyze, okay, so there's uh, Bitcoin and there are all these copies, we, we call them shit coins or altcoins. Are they actually doing something significantly better than Bitcoin? And uh, in my case, I don't think there, there is any other coin which has the same network effect, which has the same ethos in it, how it was structured, how it was set up. And uh, yes, I, I, I also uh, agree with the statement that you can invent digital scarcity only once and that you will actually have a, a shelling point like a, a black hole for one, like a network effect to one monetary standard here it doesn't make sense to have all these different tokens you know but i'm not a big friend also of bonus points and miles and more with lufthansa airline airline miles or something so i i always and i was never so much interested in these uh, token systems or anything because it i think it's just introduces friction and pricing problems because and and, and it's and most of these altcoins are actually scams because We we too we could do the, the the Anita coin and then we change some some attributes and we make the block space bigger and the the difficulty adjustment different and we have another hashing algorithm and then we do a nice website and pull off a huge scam by telling everybody okay the Anita coin is the best coin ever invented and um, have a huge marketing campaign and actually sell people the Anita coin and then we buy Bitcoin. Yeah? So um, when you look at these mechanisms, this is actually what Ripple is doing. Or I also think Ethereum is very hyped and uh, a lot of technical, very technical people interested in who don't understand money. They don't know what kind of uh, use case or what kind of problem they're solving with it. And I think it's a Ethereum for me is a scam. I'm not bullish on, on Ethereum at all. I think it's a it's a very weird project which is very nicely disguised as a as a 
tech world computer project, but it's actually a scam. Same with IOTA. I don't think IOTA has anything really to offer. They have a centralized controller running. They are pretty unsympathetic in their appearance. I think that IOTA is a scam. And if you look at the website and you see how many LinkedIn profiles they're listed there, and if you really try to understand how the thing works, it's like it hasn't really worked. And if you look at Bitcoin, it has 10 years track record. It is super reliable. It's never, the network is like never, never down. It has a ridiculous uptime of 99.99 whatever percent, which is just amazing. And um, just to to make it, to make a nice website and have a, lo- a huge promotion team and to go to every ut- utility company in Germany and explain them or a car company and that they need IOTA to coordinate their, their self-driving cars or whatever. I mean, they're, they're good marketing salespeople, snake oil. Yeah, I think IOTA is very big in the German speaking mm-hmm. area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, what comes to mind uh, in the last days, we heard about Wirecard uh, <laughs> missing 1.9 billion uh us dollars or euros anyhow yeah. it's <laughs> not a big difference <laughs> yeah. and i i think wirecard and 10x are connected in a way or yeah, i wouldn't be surprised yeah it would explain where, where some of the money has gone to yes so the exactly. whole the whole wirecard case is is just is just amazing because i think the auditors of ernst and young they are already last year they are, they said, okay, uh, the the custody accounts in the Philippines where they had the money. So basically, they had 1.9 billion euros in Philippine bank accounts, and the auditors didn't check that uh, this money was there, and it was a quarter of the balance sheet. So some people really messed up, and it looks like a huge fraud, and it's I would be pretty surprised if the sea level people were not involved. So this is, uh, but this happens when you have very easy money. That means negative interest and crazy printing of money, and money is chasing uh, returns. Then companies like Wirecard get access um, through nice marketing stories and grab this money, and yes, and then have a huge scam going on. So when we will see how this situation evolves, but I expect in the next years that when we we have another financial crisis, which could be coming up in the next six to yeah, probably yeah, six to 12 months, we will have a lot of these companies, these zombie companies, which are actually failing and we will see that there was a a tremendous amount of fraud going on and tremendous amount of scams going on so be careful when you when you buy stocks there or you buy altcoins or or do your own research really look into it and and verify that there's not a scam here yeah because with bitcoin you cannot take bitcoin and put it into account and hide it i mean you can prove funds and this is actually also what many Bitcoiners say that exchanges should prove their funds. Mm-hmm. Yes, I think. But w- w- in the mm-hmm. in the classical, in the legacy financial world, you cannot prove them, or you need Ernst and Young, and they don't find it, and then mm-hmm. another year passes. I mean, how is this possible? It's just uh, our very bad legacy system, which is not ready for for the information age, and basically we have incredible tools with uh, with the internet protocol with email with uh, video chat with voice over ip with podcasting and everything but what is really missing is is a protocol which helps us or infrastructure which helps us to communicate value in form of digital scarcity so we will we, we, we are observing i feel the more fiat money i have in bank accounts the more uncomfortable i feel and this is and the more the more i save in bitcoin and i opt out out of this old financial system and i opt into the digital scarcity of bitcoin into this alternative the more i feel comfortable uh, about it and the, this is a is a weird process but at some point i was talking with some bitcoin friend of mine from from vienna also and he told me told me this, and I, I totally agree with it. And uh, ever since I I, I see the, the the news, I, I look back into this old system where. 
people like Ernst and Young and Wirecard can provide these mediocre services and of auditing. And when you look at uh, like exchanges like Kraken or I think Coinfloor, I think they do proof of funds. And um, yes, so you have some better or even Voltoro, I think has a has a glass protocol. So it's not probably not perfect what they're doing yet, and they're are still better concepts to come uh, come up but we are going the right direction here and of course with bitcoin you can self custody with your hardware wallet or also with our product you can do a multi signature wallet and you can you can be your own bank you can be your own central bank if you run your own node and verify yourself that you have received uh, the coins and uh, the bitcoin and um, also according to the protocol rules so there's no Nobody in between you and uh, the monetary ledger and because you have a copy of the monetary Bitcoin transaction ledger. So it's your fourth year now in the Bitcoin space, <laughs> <laughs> What, well, which is actually a long time, four years in 11 years. What have you experienced? How has the space in the German speaking world changed? Like maybe from a, uh, a, a, a business uh, point of view and also from a user point of view. I, I would rather say overall, because the German space is very um, small and is mixed into into the international space. But I think the whole, the content, when I started in January 2017, there weren't, yeah, maybe one, two podcasts, but not really good quality. So now we have uh, you and, and, and people like Stefan Rivera and others, which doing a great job just interviewing people and moderating the content and also being also Bitcoin only. I think the whole Bitcoin only narrative has become much stronger. Um, so on the extreme end, we have uh, the toxic maximalists and people who uh, um, attack everybody who, uh, who who tries to do anything. It looks a little bit like a scam or something. So, and and they have also strong arguments. And then what we see overall is just the, the build out of infrastructure is is tremendous. We have here. Last year, we were at Fidelity and, and visited their team for a workshop, uh, which was a, a super interesting experience. And you're in a, at one of the biggest asset managers in the world, which man manage billions, uh, if not, I don't know, two or three trillion or more in US dollar assets under management. And they take Bitcoin very serious. Maybe they're uh, looking a little bit too much into uh, something like blockchain -y or altcoin stuff. But yes, and then you have New York Stock Exchange with Bakt, which is the, the New York Stock Exchange is owned by, is, is privately owned. They actually build a huge infrastructure there. And so you see every week you have an announcement like this almost. So yes, so I think the, the, the whole space is getting a little bit more professional. There's better content, there's more better. But it's also very confusing because there's a huge amount. But if you are able to filter which you have to do nowadays because the, with the information age, you have, you're responsible yourself for the content you consume. So when you go on social media, you always have to double check, okay, is this guy telling me something which is real or is he just uh, making up nonsense or is it a scam or what? So you have to think for yourself and um, people have to learn this. And uh, I had to learn this also uh, the hard way. You know, I was always uh, like a skeptical guy and looking at, at, at things from different angles. But I think when you earn Bitcoin, you um, start to question things uh, much more and uh, have, begin to open your mind more to different concepts. Yeah, it's true. And you need the basics to understand the differences in between the different projects. I mean, while uh, like... For instance, Facebook's Libra, you know, it's hyped by people who don't understand that this is not a cryptocurrency. This is just another way of payment, you mm -hmm. know, like mm -hmm. JP Morgan coin, for instance, or as you say, Ripple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not even a blockchain, I think. Yeah. So yeah, you gotta, you need a lot of education on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and also one point where I can hear many people say it's too difficult to store your private keys mm -hmm. securely. Mm -hmm. And uh, you started a company called Crypto Advance. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do? Well, so the, the bigger picture is that 
crypto advance is about advancing cryptography. So it's not about like crypto, which is stands for everything in the cryptocurrency space. So I'm not I'm not so worried about people talking, oh, I'm in crypto, I do crypto, crypto. The more they say crypto, the less scary it sounds because crypto, uh, cryptography has a little bit something crypto anarchisty to it. And uh, But I think I founded this company to, together with my partner, Stepan Snigirev, who is the CTO, who is an ex-quantum physicist for the German Max Planck Institute he was, and is a really great guy. And we we want to use cryptography to really improve digital privacy for the individual and create systems where people can can communicate privately and also especially as a first step, we want to help people to store their Bitcoin safely and securely, not only as an individual and but also as a, as an enterprise. So what we what we did is that we started Spectre, and Spectre is has two pieces. It's basically a Spectre desktop, which is a is a desktop app, um, which allows you to um, have an air gapped. Um, watch only wallet which runs together with your bitcoin core node so you protect your privacy by not giving out your public keys which is very important when you use a normal hardware wallet i think with trezor the xpub goes to trezor so they know all your transaction history because they have the master public key and with ledger i think they have the first 200 addresses they they get the first 200 addresses of your account and so they know what you were transacting so this is very bad for your privacy if you don't run your own node you should run your own node and on top of it have a watch only wallet like spectre desktop and then what we built on the side is from off the shelf devices with a nice screen and a card reader and a camera a qr code gap do it yourself hardware wallet and um this um, comes along very nicely and we our business model or idea is more that we focus on the on the enterprise side providing bitcoin companies with uh, hardware solutions, firmware solutions, or generally support their enterprise solutions for, with the stuff they need. And on the other side, support the community with great tools like Spectre to, to hodl their Bitcoin safely in a multi-signature setup, but also in a single seat that setup. So look into that. We are on GitHub. We are on Twitter. We have a Telegram support channel. And um, yes, if you're a little technical, we will come out hopefully later this year with a nicely packaged app but if you're like a developer guy and you want to check it out we are now on raspberry blitz so if you have a raspberry blitz run run specter and check it out and yes so now you you answered all my questions before <laughs> i could ask them <laughs> sorry so, sorry sorry for my pitch here but i <laughs> i'm on autopilot if i get asked yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's great thanks let's get back a little bit from mm -hmm. from the projects you're working on to bitcoin what is your expectation uh, of the development of bitcoin in the near and distant future what do you think comes next is it can it be a hedge against the financial crisis we have? Well, I, I believe Bitcoin was exactly built for what is happening right now. And I think it's a great hedge. It can be printed. It can't be, it can't really be confiscated. It's very hard to tax. So, and it's digital scarcity. So it's even scarcer than gold and it's actually getting more scarce. A lot of people don't talk about this aspect. Every time somebody loses his private key and loses access to his Bitcoins, these Bitcoins are gone. So Bitcoin becomes actually more scarce. And um, a lot of people don't, don't grasp it. And when you look at the amount of money printing, which is happening at the moment, the amount of, of insane spending happening by governments, I think it's a it's a it's a great hedge against a crisis, uh, a, a serious crisis of our, of our old financial system. So, at the moment, the whole markets jumping back up, and some people talk about this being a crack up boom, boom, which means like an inflation boom. So, when you look at the stock markets in Venezuela, or Argentina, or other countries which experienced high or hyperinflation, you see that the, the stock markets are rising very quickly. And um, it seems like the markets have figured out that the central banks can't stop printing and that they will print, that they will do everything to avoid a deflationary 
crash, which happened in the 1930s, and they sort of learned from it. So this time they will try to avoid this deflationary cra crash by printing as much money as possible to make sure that we are going directly into an inf inflationary or hyperinflation, not a hyperinflationary, but it's a strongly inflationary environment. And um, yes, what is very interesting is that we currently see that they really start doing universal basic income. And uh, I was always saying already before Corona crisis uh, last summer and in, in autumn, okay, they will have to do universal basic income because what they la did the last 10 years, just negative interests and pressing, printing money and putting the money into the banking system just creates a huge wealth um, disparity. The, the, the richer always get richer. It's socialism for the rich and the poorer lose purchasing power and lose um, uh, and can't purchase assets anymore with this. So what they have to do now to uh, tune this down is have universal basic income. And uh, I think, yes, it's, it's the only way they can go. So I think Bitcoin is a great hedge. It's digital gold. And it's it's very volatile, so you should at least hold it for four or five years. And uh, yes, just huddle on and don't trade it away for any altcoins or vi via card stock or some nonsense. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. I think you have to be patient and have a low time preference or a high time preference. I, I'm not such an into the <laughs> high and low preference. I say long term thinking i think like that's good time yeah. preference because everybody gets confused about it even the bitcoiners exactly and just just drop the time preference just say i have a long or a short time horizon this is where I, i'm i'm and i'm having i'm a very long-term thinking guy or long-term horizon guy yeah <laughs> yeah and there's also that saying that we overestimate what we can do in a short time mm -hmm. and underestimate what we can do in the long run i don't know who said it but i think it's great i always have to think about that absolutely <laughs> also thing. yeah it's it's also for my own projects you know my, my own work like getting more followers and stuff and more, creating more content mm -hmm. and then I always think, okay, you can't do it all now. <laughs> do it over the years. <laughs> yeah, so like adding a little bit every every day and doing do, do what you can every day and and make a little progress every day. And yes, so I believe we have we have one real superpower, and this is actually to have good habits. So if you if you if you really look at what you do every day and have good habits and you you eat well and you sleep well and you 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 do your sport and and also have specific things you do every day which you consciously plan and you you manage your habits then you you you're on a good track long term yeah Yeah, I have been swimming my 30 minutes already today. <laughs> uh, what what's your sport? I I before coronavirus hit, I was training uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, which is uh, it's it's like judo but more with ground fighting and it's a fun sport, it's quite technical and it's a it's a whole another rabbit hole. And well, I go cycling and swimming and I used to play basketball, but I'm too old for this now. And I'm always, <laughs> this is a, a young man's game and I, I, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not so quick anymore <laughs> on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So are you also a part of Team Satoshi? No, I'm, I'm not a part of, of Team Satoshi. I just recently um, started cycling, but I was, every time I was cycling, I was like, I should do this with Team Satoshi and to, to, to cycle a, a little bit more with these guys. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. I always close this with a question about book recommendations oh. about Bitcoin. Do you have something at hand or can you recommend anything It's, to our listeners? There are so many super yeah. interesting books and well this this could be an hour, another uh, 40 minutes of podcast so what i really would like people to look into is is a book by titus gebel um called free private cities and it's about a new governance model which is uh, orientated itself towards a free private city and i think this is a very interesting concept and will be a very interesting market in the next which will develop in the next 10 years and which will improve quality of life around the world tremendously if we have uh, free private cities as a as a product for as a new concept of living together 
and as a new way of opting out of dysfunctional national states. Yeah. So look into free private cities by Titus Geber. I think it's also uh, available as a free uh, audio book on, on, on Spotify. So you can listen to it while you uh, drive a car or do you do something. So it's a really cool book. Interesting. I will look into it too, mm -hmm. because I don't know it. Yeah. So please tell our listeners, where can they find you and follow your work? Um, well, the easiest way is to follow us on, on Twitter, um, crypto at crypto advance. And um, personally, I have a private Twitter account, but I don't tweet too much. It's, uh, it's um, more it's Vita sign. And of course, follow my CTO, Stefan Snigerev. We don't tweet too much. We just try to keep it to the relevant stuff. Um, focused on Spectre and more general, some technical stuff, but we are, we're trying to, to be not too noisy on Twitter and, and really make it, make relevant tweets. And other than that, check out our GitHub website. And you can see some nice screenshots there of the Spectre and of the Spectre hardware wallet uh, and, and the things that are to come. Yes, and yeah, stay tuned to Bitcoin and uh, we will meet again. <laughs> yes, we definitely will. So thank you, Moritz. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Perfect. Have a great day. That's it for today. I hope you'll join me again next week. If you like my show, please write a recommendation in your favorite podcast player. If you're a German speaker and want to start using Bitcoin, then I recommend my book to you. It gives a comprehensive jumpstart into becoming a Bitcoin user with recommendations and safety tips. You can buy it on Amazon or if you prefer to pay with Bitcoin or Lightning, drop me a message at hello at anitaposch.com. I'm currently looking for new sponsors for my podcast, so please feel free to send me a message too. For new updates, please follow me on Twitter at Anita Posch and subscribe to my newsletter at anitaposch.com forward slash newsletter. Thank you for listening. Music, start with yes, delicate beats. Idea, content and production, yours truly, Anita Posch.